Welcome to chapter two for Science 7. This, uh, this chapter has to deal with food for all and energy flows and matter cycles in ecosystems. This first section, this lesson, is all about food and how animals get their food and what kind of animals that makes them. So some of the things that we need to remember in this chapter as we go through is that the sun is the source of all energy in most ecosystems and that energy flows through those ecosystems. We can use models to show us how energy flows through those ecosystems, and that model can be used also to show how the amount of energy that is available to organisms decreases at every level in the food chain. We also need to know at the end of this chapter how matter cycles within ecosystems. So an introduction to chapter two is that wild animals spend most of their time searching for food. In order to gain energy or eat food, an animal must expend energy. So if you think of a large land animal such as a grizzly bear or a moose, it needs to eat about 5% of its body weight every day in order to survive. Sea otters, on the other hand, need to eat about 25% of their body mass every day. So we need to understand where this energy is coming from and where it's going in the ecosystem. So what you should know at the end of this particular section, 2.1, Food for All, is that living things need energy to carry out their activities, and the flow of energy from one organism to another is part of an energy web. So producers of food such as plants are related to consumers, for example, animals, and decomposers, bacteria and fungi, in webs of interdependence called food chains and food webs. And I'm fairly certain that all of you guys know what a food chain and a food web is. So there's three different types of energy that you can get from the sun. Thermal energy, which is your infrared energy. Your visible energy, which is the light that we can see and that plants use for photosynthesis. And UV energy, which is a high energy, which is normally dangerous to organisms in, in large amounts. That's what causes sunburns and stuff. So energy changes from light energy to chemical energy to heat energy through certain different processes. And the type of energy considered in this section is our visible energy that we need to be uh, aware of, which is, re again, required for photosynthesis. So plants capture the sun's energy and use it to convert inorganic compounds into energy-rich organic compounds. For example, plants use the sun energy to convert minerals such as magnesium and nitrogen in the soil into green leaves, vegetables, and fruit. The process of photosynthesis produces glucose, which may be used immediately or stored as starch for future use. Root vegetables store their starch, okay, or turned into plant material, which is essentially the grow plant. Energy is stored in chemical bonds. Breaking those chemical bonds or burning the sugar in the body releases energy. Building chemical bonds as body mass growth requires energy, and it takes energy to get energy out of food. So even if you guys are sitting at home watching TV, you are still expending energy. Your body requires energy just to keep your heart beating and to keep your lungs expanding. So even if you're doing nothing, you're still expending some sort of energy. An organism's role in an ecosystem is, is described in how it feeds. So we've talked a little bit about this already when we were doing our brochures, but producers are organism organisms that make their own food from non-living materials, and this would be those nutrients in the ground and the, and the of the light from the sun. So plants use sunlight to produce their own food, so they're called producers. Animals are called consumers because they eat other organisms. Okay, so primary consumers are those that eat plants. Secondary consumers eat the primary consumers as meat. Higher order consumers eat secondary consumers. For example, a cougar may eat a coyote, which in turn would eat mice. They also may eat plants, making them omnivores, but they are still higher order consumers. For example, bears eat fish, meat, and plants. Okay? An organism's role in the ecosystem is also described according to what it eats. Plants, herbivores, meat, carnivores, plants and meat, omnivores, dead or dying organisms, detrivores, and decomposers. And you can see all of those definitions here on this page. So primary producers, as we mentioned, are plants. And then again, that order of consumers. So our first order are our primary consumers, second order are secondary consumers, third order consumers, or our, or our tertiary consumers. We call those guys at the very, very top, or apex predators. Okay, so our apex predators, that, that predator that has no other animals that will hunt and eat it. Detrivores and decomposers. Some organisms die when their natural lifespan is over. Um, when they die, they become food for, for other animals. 
So when an organism dies in the forest, you may have other animals come and scavenge off its bones and, and pick it clean. And those animals that do that are called detrivores. Okay? Detrivores generally only eat dead or dying organisms. So things like vultures and crows are, are considered detrivores. Worms are considered detrivores. Okay? So once the detrivores are done, so they've cleaned off as much as they can, it's been picked clean, there's only bones and little bits and stuff left, the decomposers take over. The decomposers are there, they start their work the minute the organism starts to die. There's, there's bacteria and fungi all over living organisms, but they can't overwhelm that organism unless the organism is sick to begin with. But once the organism dies, those, those decomposers start working over time, and they break down those last materials and those last bits of remains and waste from those animals that the detrivores didn't get. When you see mold on an apple or a banana or anything, really, those are decomposers doing their job. And decomposers are extremely, extremely important. Think about what would happen to our earth if we didn't have decomposers, okay? Garbage would just pile up and nothing would ever happen to it. It would just get higher and higher and higher. We would be neck deep in garbage in no time because nothing would be breaking down. Okay, all of our cycles within nature require those nutrients from those decomposers to release them back into the soil, air, and water so that those cycles can start over again and that growing organisms can get the nutrients that they need that are ultimately supplied by those decomposers. Okay? So if, if those decomposers were to disappear, most of the cycles would stop and then our earth would essentially cease to function as we know it. We'll take a look at this more in class and talk a little bit about this. So I'll see you in class next time.